Hey there everyone, so today is April the 25th. Um, for anyone that is a Marvel or Avengers fan, the importance that you'll know of April the 25th is this is the release date of Endgame. Avengers Endgame, let's get the name right. Um, so, the thing that I did last night was actually was one of the very sad people that booked a seat and went out to watch the cinema experience that was basically happening at 1 minute past 12, so you can be one of the first people to watch Avengers Endgame, which is obviously quite exciting. However, what I do want to do now is run through some of the things that I was rather disappointed about. I really think they've got very, very wrong in Avengers Endgame. It just doesn't seem to quite add up. So, to start out here, if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame yet, I would recommend you do turn off. You need to go and watch the film. Don't listen to this, don't watch spoilers. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it, then come back, see if you agree with what I'm just about to say. Do not watch this if you have not seen the film. Was that clear enough? I think that was clear enough. Okay, if you're still with me, then that means you've seen the film, and in which case, this is my ramblings, and I'm very interested to see if you understand. So, first thing, obviously big spoiler warning here, everything here on in is spoilers, so you better have seen the film. So, first thing that was wrong for me, the introductory theme music. I was really looking forward to being there, big screen experience, having the Avengers uh, theme tune playing out when you first go into the beginning of the film. What do we get? We got a bit of country and western music. I'm not really sure what it was. Obviously they were trying to do a different introduction that was very calm, that was around family life, rather than the big Avengers going and beating somebody up. Um, I've got to say, it wasn't a great start to the film, and it made the film feel like it was really, really slow. Then when we get into characters, I think there were some really, really bad character choices as into the way that they were dealing with the characters that didn't really line up with anything else. So let's crack into those. First one for me was Thor. How on earth can you have Chris Hemingway as Thor being there in the new Asgard, which looks like he's in the bottom of Cornwall as a fisherman, and he's there basically eating his tummy full, a little podgy bloke, a bit like me. I mean, if it was me, I'm now Thor, apparently. Um, and he's there, he's eating, he's drinking, he's got nothing about him whatsoever. Now let's think back to all of the other films, where all of the other films with Thor, what is he? He is the shining light. When everything is going wrong, when nobody else can keep their chin up, when it looks like the world's going to end, Thor is the one that makes sure that he's there, he's positive, he's seen a way forward, he's making it happen. What he doesn't do is go and sit in the corner, sulk, eat, drink, basically just ruin everything, ruin his own life, not be ready, not be prepared. Certainly not the way that Odin trained him, and he now has his people together. Why waste it? Be with them, be a leader. But no, he basically sits there and is a right podgy so-and-so. That, for me, just wrong. Next bit about Thor, once he does actually get in the battles, does anyone notice he doesn't seem any really that strong anymore? I mean, this is the god of thunder. This is the guy that basically can go out there and he can kick some serious butt. But then he gets in front of Thanos and, quite frankly, Captain America, a lot stronger than Thor in this film, doesn't really do himself a lot of justice. What do you think? Really think they made a wrong choice with Thor. Next thing, Hulk. What is going on? Now, don't get me wrong, I haven't read all the comics, but I do know from the comics is it is quite a known thing that you have Professor Hulk. So this is a known thing. But then as part of the film, you see the bit where they go back and they go to what is basically the first Avengers film where everything is kicking off and you see what I would deem as normal Hulk. Normal Hulk is big, he's extremely strong, he's going around, he's smashing everything, and then you basically have Professor Hulk, half of his size, not very strong, who's wandering around, kind of tapping a car, pretending that he's the Hulk, when actually he's just a green boost banner, quite frankly. Um, doesn't seem to have any strength. When he does actually do something useful, so he puts the Infinity Gauntlet on that they've made and uses the stones, you know, Thor is the, I'm sorry, Hulk is the one that is supposed to basically be able to survive everything, do everything. You hurt Hulk, you get stronger, he doesn't get weaker. And what does he end up doing? He does a snap and basically pretty much wipes out his arm and he's struggling for the rest of the film. 
We then get to the main fight scene at the end of the film. Where is Thor? Oh yeah, he's kind of standing there with his good arm trying to hold up a rock. Um, and he's trying to see if he can do that. But then you see him run into the fight and you basically never see him again. Um, this is the Hulk. The Hulk should be out there smashing. And he just isn't. He's turned into a really weak character. Okay, great with the science stuff. Get that. That's wonderful. But that's what Bruce Banner is. He's lost all of his Hulkness. He's lost all of his power. For me, just wrong. Sorry. Next thing, Captain Marvel. So from Captain Marvel's point of view, let's remember Captain Marvel has arrived on the scene. She has these amazing powers. She can fly through space. She can shoot... Um, power weapons out of her body and basically she can seriously whip butt. So she comes back, she does her usual thing, manages to go and blow up some ships pretty quickly, yay go get her, we know she's really really strong and then comes face to face with Thanos. What happens? She basically stands there, Thanos tries to punch her, um, first time doesn't work, second time he grabs an infinity stone off the gauntlet, punches her, she's out for the camp, we don't see her again. This is supposed to be Captain Marvel. She's supposed to be the most powerful thing out there. And she's gone. She's wiped out. She's not helping anymore. She's out for the count. I've also got to say, I don't know what happened with Brie Larson when she was doing the filming of this character. I've seen Captain Marvel. I've seen the film. Great film. I think she's really, really good in it. I genuinely enjoy that film. I think it's really well shot. And I think Brie Larson's great in it. But I've got to say, in Endgame, what was she doing? She spent the whole of the film just basically standing there in some really strong, I am a strong woman. And she doesn't act. She doesn't play the part. She doesn't be Captain Marvel. She's overly arrogant, um, does not form part of the team, is too busy trying to project this strong person rather than being the person that she actually is and actually trying to fight. Now I happen to know that Brie Larson went through a huge amount of training to get to her, get her ready for this role. Yeah, what does she use with it? Because if you watch what she does in Avengers Endgame, she doesn't really do any fighting. So yeah, great for you to go get fit. Well done. I'm sure you look great for it, but what was the point? Okay, so that's Captain Marvel. Next one is um, Black Widow and Gamora. So, as you would have known if you've watched the film, um, obviously in Avengers uh, Endgame, we have the situation where there's a bit of a ruckus that goes on between Hawkeye and Black Widow. They need to get the Soul Stone, and cutting a long story short, Black Widow ends up being thrown off um, so that Hawkeye can get the, whole, the Soul Stone. The bit that we've got a problem here is when you then watch the bit a little bit after that where you have Hawkeye coming back, meeting up with everyone, everyone's really upset and uh, obviously they should be because we're now without Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow. We're then at a stage where Hawkeye says, basically the man up on the hill told us this cannot be undone. There is no way you can undo this. You've gone, you've got the soul stone, that's it, you're dead. There was a conversation that happened that said, hang on, we've got a time machine. We can go back. We can come and save her. No, no, not possible. Cut to the next scene. Who did they show? Gamora. Uh, excuse me, but if you remember, Gamora was got the person that got thrown off the same cliff by Thanos in an earlier film. So if she can be thrown off the cliff and be brought back... Why is it that somehow, some way, they can go throw somebody else off a cliff and bring her back as well? Now let's also remember as well that the big part around this is the fact that what you should be doing is you should be throwing someone off the cliff that means the most to you. We spend the whole film understanding that Hawkeye loves his family so much, as we all do, we all love our families, so why is it when you've got Black Widow being thrown off a cliff, okay, they're work colleagues, they get on great, they have a connection, you're not going to try and tell me that he's got as much of a connection with Black Widow as he does with his wife and daughter. He should have been throwing Black Widow off and then nothing should have happened because it would have basically turned around and said, um, yeah, it's not the most important to you, it's not the most important thing to have lost, it's just a person you know that has now died. It may be a soul, but it's not the right one. So go find your wife or daughter and throw them off instead. So, um, yeah, that one didn't kind of work for me. So Black Widow dead, Gamora now alive, but previously was dead. 
The plot doesn't really work there, people, does it? You're contradicting yourself. Next one, Captain America. So Captain America, fantastic. I think Steve Rogers here did a great job. Um, he really is out there. He's the one that's keeping his head. He's the one that's upbeat. He's the one that's keeping everybody going. Well done, Captain America. We also then see him get into a fight. When he gets into the fight, what does he do? He goes up against Thanos. Now, let's be open about it. Captain America is probably the one that battles Thanos the longest. We're trying to say here that Captain America is the strongest one of the Avengers. Really? But he does. He goes out now. The bit that I'm struggling with here is all of a sudden, Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, all of a sudden, he's at a stage where basically he is now able to lift up Thor's hammer. How all of a sudden is he worthy when he's not been worthy before? I mean, come on. So all of a sudden he's now battling Thanos and because he's battling Thanos he's now worthy and the hammer can come to him when all the other battles beforehand didn't matter? Really? That one just doesn't kind of work for me. Much as Captain America, fantastic, we love you, but mm, really? Um... And, yeah, I think that is kind of about it for me. I mean, the the bit that I would say, really great fight scene at the end. Still think it's a good film. Still would definitely want to go and see that film. Um, still worthwhile making. But I have to say there's a lot of characters in that film that basically just feel like it's not quite right. I'm not sure they've actually got this one right. But, anyway, this is my ramblings. It's over to you. What do you think about this um, please comment in the description below. We, I very much like to hear your comments. Do you agree with me? Have you got other things that you hate? Um, have you got other things you like? Do you think this was a great film? Either way, I'd like your comments. Um, either way, please like and subscribe to my channel. Please, always welcome, always like my followers. Uh, but I would actually like your comments on this one. Do you agree with me or not? Do you think I'm talking gibberish or not? Um, so yes, over to you. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching, and see you again soon. Bye!